The digital world is in complete turmoil. Right as we speak, there are great business and even political battles going on. Great battles whose outcome will redefine the world of digital services in the years to come. The most well known of these wars, the one that is the most talked about, is undoubtedly the streaming war. However, it is by no means the only one. In this video, we will take a look at a new war that has been declared in 2020, that of the application stores. A new battlefield that, as you will see, also impacts the movement of astronomical figures and may have a considerable impact on the way we relate to technology. A war that, above all, affects what is, at the time of making this video, the most valuable company in the world. With a market value of over $2 trillion, trillions with a T, I am referring, of course, to the business giant Cupertino. Apple has begun to face a full-on offensive that puts one of its most profitable businesses at risk, the App Store. That is, in 2020, the US House of Representatives Judiciary Subcommittee on Antitrust, Commercial and Administrative Law has put Apple dead in its sights. In its last report, published in early October 2020, it denounced the Apple company for monopolistic practices in relation to its applications business. And no, that's not all. During the month of August, Epic Games, the video game company associated with Chinese giant Tencent and owner of the popular, well, not just popular, from the social phenomenon that the game Fortnite has become, decided to launch the battle against Apple. First, as we will see, by ignoring Apple's rules and then directly in the courts. they are not alone. Epic Games has partnered with 12 other digital companies, including Spotify and Match Group, the parent company of the popular app Tinder, to create the Coalition for App Fairness, a platform whose goal is to expose the alleged abuses Apple is committing with its app store and to call for public regulation to end these hypothetical monopolistic practices. In addition, technological giants such as Microsoft, Facebook and Google, although not part of this coalition, have shown their support for it in one way or another, and all of them are also under scrutiny from the very same subcommittee. But taking all of this into account, what implications could all these attacks have? Why has such a battle broken out in the technology industry? Are app stores so important? What could all this mean for Apple? What risks does it face? In this new video that we've made in collaboration with Value School, we will try to answer all of these questions. And the first thing that we need to do is understand exactly what we're talking about and just how huge it is. So let's get into it. A source of endless wealth. Not even the coronavirus has been able to beat Apple. What is by far Warren Buffett's largest investment has had a pretty impressive 2020 on the stock market. During the first nine months of the year alone, Apple shares have increased in value by 56%. This led the company to surpass the two trillion stock market valuation barrier. By the way, the latent capital gains that Warren Buffett has achieved so far with his investment in Apple amounts to, you might want to hold onto your chair, more than $80 billion. Berkshire Hathaway has more than tripled its investment in Apple in less than five years. And you know what? To a large extent, this impressive evolution has been due to the good performance of its services division. You see, Apple's services division, made up of businesses such as the App Store, iCloud, Apple Music, Apple Care, Apple Pay, Apple Arcade, and Apple TV+, Plus, is becoming the company's spearhead, the driving force with which Cupertino aspires to maintain its growth rates. We are talking about a division with a turnover at 12 months that already exceeds $50 billion, almost 20% of all Apple's revenue. However, the services have two major advantages. Firstly, they are recurring income without strong quarterly fluctuations, which makes them more predictable predictable and not vulnerable to the better or worse performance of the launch of some new star product. Secondly, the margins are much higher. Its gross margin is over 60%, compared to just over 30% in the hardware business. In other words, although services still only account for around 20% of all revenue, their contribution to profits is much higher, far exceeding 30%. And take note because the service division, unlike products such as the iPhone or iPad, maintains considerably high growth rates. Since 2014, for example, it has recorded an average annual growth of over 18%.
We are talking about more than 550 million paid subscriptions to Apple services, and the forecasts are optimistic. This services division is expected to achieve a turnover of just over $80 billion by 2025, which means that in terms of profits, this division could bring Apple about half of all its corporate profit. In fact, it's the confidence in these forecasts that largely explains the good performance that Apple has had in the stock market over the last two years. That it's PER, or the price earnings ratio, at which its shares are quoted, has increased almost threefold. And that some analysis firms, such as Wedbush Securities, value the services division alone at over $700 billion. Well, the App Store is the core business of this entire division. According to existing estimates during the last fiscal year, one out of every $3 Apple build in services was done through the App Store. We are talking about an annual turnover of just over $15 billion with very high margins, perhaps even above 70%. So you could imagine the implications, the consequences that Apple could suffer if the regulator were to cut off or restrict this source of profit. Now, having said that, at the market level, just how big is the App Store? Why have complaints about it grown so much? Listen up. A game-changing model. Friends, the appearance of the iPhone was a huge change, a revolution in the world of telecommunications. But unlike what is commonly thought, the biggest paradigm shift did not come from the touchscreen, but mostly from the way the software worked, and specifically from the development of the app system. You see, Apple had a very ingenious idea to make its software available to thousands and thousands of developers so that they could create apps of all kinds. Apps that would have to strictly comply with the requirements set by Apple and that would work in a sandbox environment. That is, in an isolated system which would guarantee that they are safe apps. In the iOS environment, applications cannot ask the user for permission to execute dangerous actions. They cannot install malware, viruses, or any other harmful element. And they cannot execute structural or security changes in the phone's configuration. And that's not all. All these apps are distributed exclusively from the App Store itself. This means that if they offer services with a cost, these are paid for through Apple. That means an application cannot persuade you, for example, to share your credit card with it. In addition, installation and updates are very simple operations where users practically do nothing. By the way, later, when Google developed its own store, it opted for a freer model, and that has given them a lot of headaches due to the security flaws. These days, all this might seem a bit normal to us, but think of the change it represented at the time. Suddenly, thousands and thousands of companies and developers began to create applications and set up businesses based on this new form of interaction with customers. At the same time, customers could not only do a thousand new things with their phones, but also do them safely. This favoured the small creators in particular. Now, they no longer had to gain the trust of customers to think that they were safe apps. They only had to worry about providing good service and competing head-to-head -head with the biggest players in the industry. However, in exchange for this entire distribution chain, Apple keeps a percentage of the sales made through the App Store, a commission that, in the case of digital services, because physical products and services do not count, ranges from 15 to 30%. What needs to be highlighted here is that these charges are in line with what the rest of the platforms of this type charge. But it's not just about the commission. Apple also sets the rules and decides who is in and who is not. And if you're not in the App Store, you're simply out of the iOS world. The fact is that this model caused a whole software explosion. Today, the App Store has almost 2 million applications, 500 million weekly users, and sales of more than 50 billion each year, of which, as we have seen, some $15 billion go to Apple as a sales commission. <laughs> Friends, the App Store may not seem that significant, but you can see that it is no joke. It's a gigantic distribution business, and it's the biggest App Store in the world. Every year, it makes almost twice as much as Google Play, the Google Store. To give you an idea of the industry that has been created, according to Apple data, since 2008, it has paid developers more than $155 billion. On the other hand, according to a study by the consulting firm Analysis Group, App Store applications were responsible for a total turnover of $519 billion in 2019, if we take into account all the physical products, services, and digital goods that were sold through these applications. From travel reservations, to the purchase of mobile games, to video platform subscriptions, food sales, or Uber trips. 
If you have an iPhone, you may never have noticed it, but the App Store is a fierce business powerhouse. I'll repeat that figure. $519 billion in 2019 alone. If you're a developer and you're not in this store, well, your business might have a problem. So, in a nutshell, you can see it as one of the driving forces of Apple's takeoff. However, it seems this huge business could now be at risk, at least in part. Well, why? Let's take a look. Antitrust alert! Friends, the App Store was a revolution, but now it faces the scrutiny of both the United States Congress and the European Commission. Well, let's start with the United States. In this country, the Judicial Subcommittee of the United States House of Representatives on Antitrust, Commercial and Administrative Law has been investigating the large tech companies for some time for alleged monopolistic practices. And after 16 months of investigations, this subcommittee presented its latest report in early October 2020. It states that Apple has monopolistic power over the distribution of software on iPhones. That is, with the App Store. This would apparently allow Cupertino's company to gain extraordinary benefits, use the information gathered to carry out unfair competition actions, and to prioritize its own software solutions against the competition. According to this report, although it is true that there is competition in the smartphone industry, given that iOS dominates the US market and platform jumps are not frequent, in its opinion, the iOS universe must be considered as a market in itself. Apple's market power is enduring due to high switching costs, ecosystem blockage, and brand loyalty. Report of the Judicial Subcommittee of the US House of Representatives of Antitrust, Commercial, and Administrative Law. And there, of course, the App Store has a monopoly because unlike Google, Apple does not allow other application stores to be installed on its devices. But that's not all. The legislators have also presented some recommendations that will now have to be reviewed by the members of Congress. Recommendations that range from forcing Apple to accept other app stores to establishing the rules of the game by law or prohibiting the owner of the platform from giving priority to its apps. There is even the possibility of prohibiting platform owners from operating in certain lines of business in which they can benefit from the information generated from transactions made in the App Store itself. Obviously, it may all come to little or nothing, but the risk is there. Keep in mind that the investigations of this committee have already been used in the condemnation that Microsoft received at the beginning of the century for Monopoly. conviction that forced the company to break the links between the Windows business and its software business. And it's not just the United States. The European Commission has started its own crusade against Apple's alleged monopolistic practices. In this case, it has two different services in its sites. On the one hand, the App Store, and on the other, the Apple Pay service. And friends, when it comes to the European Commission, it would not be unusual if all this leads to heavy fines. And as if all of this weren't enough, now these two fronts have been joined by the Coalition for App Fairness, led by Epic Games and Spotify, who are asking to be able to compete with other app stores directly. That is, not having to pay the 30% commission and not being subject to Apple's rules. Our is ours and ours we shall the battle began in August 2020, when Epic Games introduced its popular game Fortnite, the option to buy without going through Apple, and therefore without paying the 30% commission. That made Apple withdraw Fortnite from its platform and started an intense legal battle. So there you have it, three battle lines drawn on one of Apple's most lucrative businesses. And it's not just the Cupertino company that's at risk. If the authorities were to interfere with this business model, other platforms could also run into trouble. For example, the Xbox, Nintendo, or PlayStation video game platforms that work in a very similar way. In short, this is another of the great wars that have begun to be fought in the world of digital services. In this case, the impact on Apple could be considerable. Not a gigantic or decisive one, but a significant one. You have already seen how lucrative this type of business can be. But now, it's your turn. What do you think about all of this? Do you think that we should put limits on big technology companies? Or should we just let each company set the standards it believes are best within its own services? Leave us your opinion down in the comments. And if you found this video interesting, don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to Visual 
politic. By the way, thank you very much to all of our friends at Value School for all the help that they gave us in preparing this video. Take care, and we'll see you next time. If you want to learn more about politics and world affairs and hear some more of my lovely voice, come check out the Reconsider podcast, where we don't do the thinking for you. Find Reconsider at www.reconsidermedia.com or on Apple or Google Play or your favorite podcatcher.